I'm in Paris, and I'm here on the trail of a man called Thomas Paine, a forgotten hero in the story of how we in Britain became what we are today, a democracy. Tom Paine lived a full century after the Glorious Revolution, but he came here to Paris to witness another revolution, one that helped shape the modern world, the French Revolution of 1789. In July 1789, the people of Paris shook off the tyranny of the French king, Louis XVI. They stormed his infamous prison, the Bastille. At first, the British applauded. It seemed the French were finally bringing their kings under control, as we had done a century beforehand. But within weeks, new ideas were emerging here. Ideas that showed up the stagnant corruption of British political life. And it was Tom Paine, more than anyone, who brought these new ideas to the attention of the British people. This story begins not in Paris, but in Yorkshire, on the Wentworth Woodhouse estate, just outside Rotherham. Tom Paine was in Yorkshire when the Bastille fell. He was mixing with a circle of political allies who based themselves here at the family seat of the second Marquis of Rockingham. Well, you may ask what a radical like Tom Paine, a rope maker's son, was doing hanging out with aristocrats like this. Well, it seems that these grand political figures had rather adopted Tom Paine because they admired his modern, his, his daring views. Ten years earlier, for instance, there'd been an uprising in Britain's colonies in America, the Wars of Independence. Now, most Brits were appalled at the loss of our colonies, not Tom Paine. He had actually gone out to America. He had fought alongside the colonists and he had argued their case. He had said, what right did we Brits have to expect the colonists to pay tax, to obey the law, when we didn't even give them the vote? And MPs like this man, Edmund Burke here, he lapped up everything that Tom Paine had to say. He was part of the ruling elite and yet he could sense that yes, the present system was riddled with injustice. In the summer of 1789, word of the revolution sweeping Paris reached Tom Paine in Yorkshire. And the news filled Paine with excitement because at last it seemed the flame of liberty he had seen kindled in America might light up not just France, but Britain too. We'd always felt ourselves better off than the French. Ever since the Glorious Revolution, we'd boasted about our parliamentary freedom and we'd mocked the French for suffering under a tyrannical king. Well, now the French had risen up and they'd overthrown their king, whereas we still suffered the rule of the aristocracy. With so few people able to vote, Paine believed our freedom was just a delusion and he hoped in this age of revolution we might come to understand that fact and Paine set off for Paris to find out, as he hoped, what real freedom looked like. Paine was bowled over by the force of idealism sweeping France. Here, everyone, rich or poor, had been proclaimed a citoyen, a citizen, equal under the law. Titles and tithes, the old unfair taxes, had been abolished. And here, a debate was underway. How should the state be run? And Paine joined in. He argued for votes for all. Tom Paine wrote letters to his friends back home in England, expressing enthusiasm for everything he witnessed here. He wrote to his friend Edmund Burke, the MP who joined with him a decade earlier supporting the American colonists. He expected Burke to share his enthusiasm. But Burke, back in England, had felt an increasing sense of panic at the idea of ordinary people rising up and taking control of the process of government. And in answer to Tom Paine's letters, he wrote his famous Reflections on the Revolution in France, painting a terrifying portrait of where this kind of people power might lead. The mob out of control, destroying property, everything good and decent, trodden down under the hooves of the swinish multitude. And this snobbish diatribe shocked Paine profoundly. His friendship with Burke was over. But out of the wreckage of that friendship emerged, in my opinion, 
one of the finest books ever written. This is it, The Rights of Man, being an answer to Mr. Burke's attack on the French Revolution. And this, very movingly, is Tom Paine's statement of faith in the fundamental decency of the human spirit. Who was right, Burke or Paine? Paine's belief was that ordinary people, given the chance to play their part in the democratic process, would do so responsibly. They'd act not just selfishly, but for the greater good, and that remains the basis upon which modern democracies function. Burke's more desperate vision of a swinish multitude running riot terrified the British establishment. And it seemed, at least here in Paris, Burke's pessimism was well-founded. The tragedy was that over three years, the French Revolution collapsed into an orgy of bloodletting. The anger of centuries of injustice saw first the king, then the queen, then an entire class of aristocrats and gentry brought to the Place de la Révolution, there to be executed by guillotine. By mid-1794, observers described the streets of Paris running with blood. Even Tom Paine himself was thrown in prison. This staunch friend of democracy was accused of being a royalist. He barely escaped with his life. Tom Paine's bestseller, The Rights of Man, gave the British public the clearest argument yet for a change in our political system. And yet, the events he had lived through here fed in the British ruling elite a fear, which would hold back the cause of democracy for generations.